in the twilight of Earth's great civilizations, we were chosen. Some were selected for their skills, others for their strength, and some by luck. Great ships were the embodiment of each nation's ingenuity, courage, and faith. And they sent us to the stars in search of a new home. As we raced skyward, we carried aloft the hopes and dreams of those left behind. Our journey through deep space was long and quiet. is finally over. Now we look upon our new world for the first time. On these alien shores, our destiny waits. A new beginning for mankind. Welcome to Perardo's Let's Play of Sid Meier's Civilization Beyond Earth. So, my first impressions of the game, and we're going to go through this. I've not played this, and I've seen very little, other than that initial cutscene, I've seen very little um, scenes or, or gameplay footage of the game. So we're going to kind of, we're going to go through this together. I, I don't know any, probably any more information than you do. Uh, first, right off the bat, uh... You know, gonna I like this. Well, first off, I'm going to say that I'm finding the interface to be very clean, which I love. Uh, it's very minimal. There's not a lot of extras. It's very clean, straightforward. Um, I mean, even just this kind of you know, opening uh, menu screens are just very, very simple. Um, and uh, so that I mean, so that's fantastic. Um, so anyway, as you know, you know, I like to set up the game and, and I have my kind of standards of what I do. Um, the difficulty levels, they've of course changed um, what they're called. So now they actually refer to um, different launches. Or um, So you have Sputnik, of course, Mercury, Vostok, Gemini, Soyuz, and Apollo. Uh, Mercury is your normal and then uh, Mostok is uh, a moderate. So we're going to stick with Mercury just because we have not we haven't played before. So let's see what that's all about. Keep with a standard game pace. I don't see a reason to change that. Um, map size. I love huge maps. And I love playing against a lot of different AI players. Now, one change here from Civilization V, as you can see, is that uh, in Civ V, I believe the max number of players was 12. And in beyond earth it's eight and even if you look at the massive uh it's still only eight players all it does is give you more open space so i'm going to go with a standard size uh the small which is the default is six i i just like i like eight players let's use it so once you accept that and this is we're, we're setting up a single player game here um you get to designate a sponsor and basically the the concept behind this is is that you know these eight uh, sponsors, as they're called, or, or you know, um, confederations, or federate, whatever, uh, have come together and uh, and have you know launched all these spaceships, uh, rockets into into space to find you know the next planet that we can colonize, uh, so that you know we can the human race can continue to live on. So similar to all the other civilizations, each of these 
sponsors or civilizations, if you will, have special uh, traits to them. So you've got ARC, which gets you know 25% uh, faster covert operations. Um, you got Franco-Iberia, where you get a free technology for every 10 virtues. Paul Australia, plus two trade routes for the capital. All of these, you know, very interesting different qualities. Uh, I'm going to go with random because, you know, it, you guys have not seen um, any Civilization Five videos I've done. I've actually created quite a few of them, and I just never posted them because I found they're just very long. Um, I mean, you know, the gameplay is long, so I never got around to them. But I really like random because it gives you a really good option to kind of play everything. So I go ahead with random sponsor, and then you can choose your colonists. And this really is going to dictate, I think, you know, the, your, the path you're going to be taking in the game. Um, you can choose scientists, refugees, aristocrats, engineers, or artists. Um, and of course, you know, if you think about it, if your colonists are going to be artists, you're probably going to be focused on a culture victory or, or some kind of culture push. If they're engineers, it's all about production. If they're aristocrats... Um, I guess it's all about commerce. Um, you know, refugees, of course, maybe that's um, expanding your cities. And then scientists. Again, I'm going to go with random because I, I just, you know, first game, let's try it. Let's see what we get. Then you get to choose your spacecraft. And again, with each spacecraft, like everything else, there's a special trait that comes along. And so you've got your continental surveyor, which will reveal coasts on a map. Retrograde thrusters. Uh, a wider area for choosing where to land for your first city. So unlike other past civilizations where you just, here's your settler, and just psh, go build you know your city wherever he lands, here you actually, with at least with retrograde thrusters, you'll get to choose where to land and, and start your first city, which is a, a nice, could be a nice um, change for the game. Uh, tectonic scanner, no technology is needed to see petrol, uh, geothermal and titanium resources, uh, fusion reactor, uh, you get 100 energy at standard speed, and life form sensor, you can reveal alien nests. So it looks like the aliens are going to be your um, barbarians, essentially, for uh, Beyond Earth. Uh, again, I'm going to go random because I, I want to, let's see what we get, and uh, you know, let's pl we'll play with that. Now, cargo. Now you have to choose the cargo that's going to be on your... Uh, that's on your spacecraft. Again, you've got multiple options here. Hydroponics basically allows you to begin with extra uh, population in your first city. Laboratory, you begin with a pioneering technology. Raw materials, you begin with a clinic um, being built in your first city. Weapon arsenal, you begin with a soldier. And then, of course, machinery, you begin with a worker. I'm going to go ahead and go random. But that's great that you, I mean, you know, you're always fighting. You you always typically began with a soldier unit, a warrior. Um, and then uh, you, know, you had to build a worker, build a settler, and so forth. So, so that's great. Now, planets. And so this is interesting. Um, you've got basically three planets to choose from. And, uh, of course, they all have their names, and they kind of give you an idea of what the planet is. So, Dries 152C is a Terran world with a few large land masses separated by oceans and some smaller islands. Then you've got Donovan 171B, uh, one ocean, very, very large continuous land mass. Um, and then uh, Mileski 562C, which is just a world of a lot of islands. So, you've kind of got those three major you know, planet types there, uh, a planet with just a huge land mass and a big ocean, uh, a planet that's mostly islands, and then a planet that's kind of a mix. Um, and you can choose to rescan for planets, uh, which would give you three different planets to choose from. You can choose a random world, which is what I'm going to pick, because I'm going to let you randomly pick one of these. Um, although I will freely admit, I love to play on island worlds mainly because, or at least I like to start my civilization on an island. I don't necessarily like island worlds, um, but I like to start my civilization on an island because I feel like I have the most control over that civilization at the start. Um, and then of course there's advanced worlds, um, 
which we're not going to get into. <laughs> but that's always an option as well. So uh, once you pick your planet, you can go ahead and get started. So it seems, uh, just based on our little like entry log here, that we are ARC. So we know that much. And it looks like it's loaded. What's interesting is there was no, no like kind of like loading screen like that. This is the loading screen, but there's nothing really to indicate that it was loading. Hello, I am the Advanced Integration and Simulation Resource, or Advisor. I am equipped to introduce you to the basic systems that will guide your development on this new planet. Additionally, I can provide strategic advice based on situations you encounter. How would you like me to proceed? So I don't know if you had the same thought I did, but I immediately thought Jarvis. I just and now of course I mean civilizations has always had an advisor f function which is awesome um, but just the the tone of the voice the slight accent not quite there uh, is reminiscent of Jude Law as Jarvis in Iron Man and in the Avengers uh, I'm just saying maybe I just have the Avengers on my mind because we got to see that little teaser trailer of uh, for Ultron I don't know um, well I'm gonna stick with advisor level new to civilization because um, or here we go, new to beyond Earth. That that sounds like a better one for us, since I've played all the civilizations. And advice only or full guidance. Now, they don't tell you what the difference is between the two. Um, we're going to go with advice only. And actually, I'm going to turn this off for future. All right, so. Select a suitable location for our people to make planet for. This will be the site of our first great city. Select a plot within the red border to land. Now. You, as most civilization starts, you have like this fog, uh, and you can only see so much. Uh, and so now we get to choose where our city is going to be, but it has to be within this red area. So you really don't get that much of a choice. Um, I mean, there is a little bit of a choice, but not much. And honestly, it seems like this middle one is the best. You've got some energy here, production, and food. Um, let's actually see what they say here on where outposts should be founded. Uh, outposts become cities, and thus you need to give them some thought, of course. Plenty of food, production, and access to resources. Often a good idea to build a city on a river or coastal hex, of course. That's pretty standard. Um, can cities constructed on hills get a defensive bonus, making it harder for enemies to capture them? Okay, well... That was semi-helpful. Um, I think I'm going to plop that city right there in the middle. That just seems to be the most logical thing for me to do. Alright, we found it central. What a horrible name for a city. But, okay. <laughs> um, I guess it's just an outpost right now. Uh, all right, so now we've got our explorer, and so oh, look at this! This interface is so different. Um, I mean, similar. I mean, you, you, the, all of these buttons—if you've played Civilization before—all of this should look familiar to you. Um, but just very, I like just the cleanness of it. So, as I am one to do in Civilization, is I get an explorer unit. He's going to explore, and I usually let them explore by themselves. Um, but monitoring. So I'm going to have him explore in an automated fashion. So he already came down here. It looks like we got some gold over here. Uh, if you notice when you mouse over the little info panel that pops up. Oh, it just popped up where my mouse was. But it also pops up in the top right next to the mini map. Um, it used to be in the bottom right. So they've kind of like shifted some things around on the screen, but otherwise, uh, I mean, it's very simple, easy to follow. So we got some gold over here. Uh, we've got, looks, uh, silica here, um, floatstone, copper, tubers, lots of plains, grassland, forest, swamp. Um, I don't know what half of these resources are that they said, um, but I'm sure they're going to be useful. <laughs> uh, and then we have access now to our worker. And uh, already there's a suggestion build uh, recommending building a generator here, which will produce energy. 
And you know me, I like to, you know, typical standard, I think, worker stuff, you know, route to mode, construct a farm, build a road, generator is new, um, standard options. Again, worker, I like to automate the worker actions. Uh, I'm a very kind of hands off <laughs> um, controller, if you will. And uh, all right, so that basically sets up our units for. Um, what they're going to do for the next few turns and then we can go ahead and choose production for our city so we have only a few options of course because we just started we can build another worker explorer or a soldier uh, now that's what's interesting is we don't have a soldier unit now there was an option um, when we set up the game as to what we would you know collect or start out with and uh, we went random and so we ended up with a worker which is fine um, but we don't have a soldier, so we have no defense right now. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, of course, now we can also build a clinic and an old earth relic. And the ad economic advisor is recommending an old earth relic. And the old earth relic, well, it will cost 40 production. It gives a annual cost one energy. Um, it will also produce two culture. So it's like the monument from Civilization V, uh, and that'll take eight turns to build, and um, it, it looks like instead of gold, your currency is energy, essentially. That's what it seems. Uh, if you look up here, you've got energy, 100 total energy. Yeah, exactly. Your energy is, is uh, what was gold. You also have health. Which is basically your happiness, uh, it would seem. Culture, of course, is still there. And then these are your different uh, resources. Xenomass, Floatstone, and Fire Excite. Which is great because we already saw some Floatstone over here. And then, of course, your science being generated. And then your standard kind of other options. So, over here on the upper left, you have some additional Harmony... Uh, Furity and Supremacy. Interesting. I guess we'll get into that a little bit more. Anyway, let's go ahead and have him build the Old Earth Relic. Um, we will want to have a warrior built soon, uh, but we're going to stick with the Old Earth Relic right off the bat. And then, of course, we get to choose our research. So this is the new technology tree. The Tech Web provides a bird's eye view of the technologies that may be discovered and how they are connected. Technologies come in two types, branches and leaves. Branches represent broader technological ideas and cost less research. Leaves are more specific and are more expensive. So the technology web, very different than what it was before. Essentially, you can research a very high level um, branch of technology and then move on to a connected branch. Or you can go down and research a very a little a more specific piece of that research so this is going to be interesting because there's you're, okay as you research these leaves you're going to get access to different um you know technologies and of course you don't have to worry about oh i need to research you know chivalry so i can get a knight and have a strong early you know uh, medieval unit um that's not the case here you already have some of those technologies um, but I guess there's going to be advanced technologies that you're going to want to research. Um, also notice here, uh, small colored icons on many of the, uh, the texts researching that those texts will earn affinity points, which you can use to upgrade. Two types of text, branch text like genetics and then leaf text like genetic mapping. Right, that's what we were just saying. Uh, genetic mapping contains a red purity icon, which means you will earn purity affinity points when you complete the tech. Okay. Filter the tech by many different subjects or search for a specific item. Wow. Okay. So, where do we start? <laughs> this is like, I, I gotta say, this is like a little overwhelming for me. Um, so, we already have habitation. We started out with that pioneering so here's so now this is interesting you don't automatically start out with the ability 
with a settler, and here they're called colonists, um, you have to research the technology that would give you a colonist. Uh, work barge, which I assume sounds like it's for water. Um, when, yep, okay, so that's like your, uh, your compass, allowing land units to embark or go across, or optics. Uh, from Civ 5. Uh, Alright, so pioneering will give you a colonist, a trade convoy, a trade vessel, and a trade depot. I gotta say, pioneering sounds like the smart move. Um, just so for expansion purposes, we can start, you know, build another outpost and start building up our city. We also have genetics. Um, oh, and that's interesting that the... Oh, the, well, I guess they do. So you can get petrol... Which we need um, a lab, a recycler, launch complex under physics, observatory, ranger, titanium with engineering, repair facility, thorium reactor, combat rover. Ecology gives us the mysmic repulsor, vivarium, and ultrasonic fence. Okay. And then, of course, you've got all these outliers, and they're all mapped. So if we were to do genetics, it would then allow us to do cognition or genetic design. So it's an interesting approach because you're going to need a lot of different spokes on this wheel. Let's just put it that way. Well, I'm going to stick with pioneering for right now because I think 80 science. How does that compare? 95, 95. Okay, so that's actually pretty low. And then, of course, you have... You do have your advisor recommendations, which I didn't point out. You have your military advisor here recommending engineering. And then you have your... And then you have your economic advisor over here recommending ecology, and your science advisor recommending genetics. Um, I mean, maybe we don't need pioneering right now. I just feel like... You know, I always feel like, oh, I need, I need to expand and grow and, and what have you. Um, and I don't really know what kind of strategy we're going to take to or for this for the win um, go genetics you get a cyto nursery a pharma lab and then access to alien life forms and genetic mapping genetic mapping has purity points that's the other interesting thing is that there are these three um I don't know what to call them, but you have purity, you have harmony, and you have supremacy. And so it almost is like as you, these technologies are so very connected to them. All right, you know what? I'm going to go, I'm going to go with pioneering. It, that's what I'm going with right off the bat. Well, let's get that researched and then... I'll go on to the next. All right, so that's the end of our turn. New updates in Victory Log. So this is this is uh, this is new. So let's take a look. I quest log: uh, failed quest, completed quest, cultural burden, blood bank. We apparently complete. All right, so oh, quests are missions that you can perform for extra rewards. Some quests have multiple stages, so check back. Click on a quest to view its objective. The quest log also has a tab for victories. All right, well, that's very basic. Um, this is almost like achievements. Um, you know, every game's got to introduce achievements. So this is essentially what it is. Uh, you have, like, a quest here to, to complete. So if you want to do the Promised Land, um, it's all about... Uh, finding a new world, da -da 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 -da, da -da 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 focus research on advancing orbital infrastructure. Launching a laser comm satellite into orbit, we should be able to make contact with Earth. Ah, well, that's a good point. Like, one of the major things you need to do when you land here is get back to Earth and contact them. So these are your, oh, these are your victories. And then these are your quests. We have no active quests. But, but these are the victories. So this is how you win the game. Okay, there's five ways to win, similar to uh, all the other civilizations. You have Promised Land, which is basically, like we just said, launching that laser comm satellite and uh, getting communication back to Earth. That's a good one. Transcendence. Um, basically, hey, guess what? We found aliens. 
<laughs> um, and you have to develop a cognitive link. Uh, pool our efforts towards the research of nanorobotics, transgenics, and swarm intelligence. Only then can we keep, begin to explore the vast flow of mental capabilities. Wow, that, you know, that is really similar, sounds really similar to me, to, um, oh man, Neil Patrick Harris's character uh, in, oh, I'm drawing a blank on the movie right now. Um, battle, uh, not Battlestar, uh, gosh, I can't think of it right now, but, um, anyway, the big aliens and the bugs and, and Neil Patrick Harris mentally talks to them, I know you guys know what it is, I just can't think of the name of the, the movie, uh, Contact, where, uh, basically create, uh, an expedition and, uh, finding a signal, launch deep space telescope, The signal. Two ways to find signal data. Interesting. So a previous civilization. So it's trying to find them. So it's it's as of right now, it's connecting back to Earth, connecting with aliens, connecting with an old civilization. Domination, of course. Um, I mean, as it should be as simple as it sounds, just knock out all of the competing um, civilizations. And then Emancipation, which is, we left Earth with the goal of finding a new home, uh, but did we know it would transform us? Ooh, mystical. Um, but they don't, essentially the idea is, oh, we have no interest in returning home and we don't want to connect back with Earth. Uh, so basically, they're going to reestablish contact with Earth. Um, again, that's a laser comm too. But there are different paths, I guess, along the way. Um getting that all right so those are the quests and the victories and i guess those will pop up as we go along so let's go ahead and end our turn this is major tom to ground control i'm stepping through the door Stars look very different today For here am I sitting in a tin can